Hello guys and gals and welcome. So uh, we are going to do another Rune Word video today and, uh, and I know someone who's been looking forward to this Rune Word video. Uh, this Rune Word is the Rune Word Ice. And uh, we have gone over this Rune Word before, um, although not specifically, in the Bowen Mancer video. I actually used this Rune Word specifically to enhance the amount of damage that he did. Um, I also used this in the, uh, the Rune Word video with the Procazon. Um, although my in the Bowen Mancer video, I don't think I really talked about it very much, but in the Procazon video, I did talk about it quite a bit. Um, so keep your eyes on that if you want to see a more practical use of the Rune Word um, than, than this one. This is going to be going over the Rune Word specifically and, uh, and not, you know, talking about uh, all the individual effects uh, in, a, in a, like an hour-long video where we, where we watch how they uh, they proc so uh, so take a look at that video if you're interested in seeing the the bow in action essentially so uh, this is the bow here and uh, and as you can see it is am shale jaw low so pretty expensive with a jaw and a low rune in there but not as ridiculously expensive as say an infinity and um, it has some very interesting effects and let's go over to the uh, the website just so we can make sure we're getting the the pure uh, information as opposed to, you know, something that may have changed on the bow or, uh, or the variables. All right, so right off the bat here, we see it's only capable of being made in missile weapons, uh, which is basically just bows and crossbows. Um, and then we also have uh, some very nice effects on this. So number one is 100% chance to cast level 40 Blizzard when you level up, which is pointless. Uh, it's, you're probably almost never going to use that. 25% chance to cast level 22 Frost Nova when striking, which is pretty darn cool. And uh, and Frost Nova, while it is not an amazingly high damage ability, it does apply a chill effect to all targets nearby. And that chill effect is going to help you immensely as far as crowd control is concerned. So if we look at, uh, at the list here, we have 22 Frost Nova, and of course we only go up to 22. So we're looking at 56 to 67 damage. So the damage isn't really what we're looking at, but we're looking at the cold length duration on this. This is why this is important. So we have uh, level 22, and it goes up one second per level. So we're looking at uh, 28, 29. So almost 30 seconds um, of chill duration for every single time the Frost Nova strikes. Now, um, keep in mind that uh, in Hell Difficulty, monsters do have things like half freeze duration, uh, so that, that will be reduced down to about 15 seconds. But still, 15 seconds of chill is uh, insanely good for something that you can spam on a regular basis. At a 25% chance to cast, you're gonna spam it all the time. All right, so, uh, so next on the list, we've got a uh, level 18 Holy Freeze Aura when equipped, which is uh, which is pretty darn awesome. That is the Paladin Aura. And uh, if we go down to the Holy Freeze Aura and we look at level 18 Holy Freeze, we will see that it is a radius of 15.3 yards. And at all targets within that are going to be slowed by 53%, which is amazing. Uh, that caps at 80%, by the way. Uh, it has a cold damage of 31 to 32, which is not a lot, but um, it will actually kill a lot of uh, monsters in normal difficulty. Um, as you're running around, you'll just have monsters dying for no reason. Um, and it adds cold damage to your attacks of 155 to 160. Now, this um, can be uh, synergized with a paladin. If you have this on a paladin, you could synergize it with the actual uh, abilities. And if you were using this on a sorceress, you would gain the cold mastery effects as well. So, so keep that in mind. And um, very, very nice aura. I think a lot of people will agree that Holy Freeze is uh, it's just a very strong crowd control aura, and that's why the Holy Freeze Merc in Act 2 is one of the most popular. Uh, we also have 20% increased attack speed, which is great. Uh, it's definitely nice to have 20% increased attack speed on any weapon. It would be nice if it was higher than that, but, it's, but there are a lot of bows that don't have any at all, so keep that in mind. Uh, we have 140 to 210% enhanced damage, which is uh, a, a kind of a large radius there. That's 50% radius. Or, or, oh, I'm, I'm terrible with math, I know. 60, 70. So a 70% range on the enhanced damage. And, um, and that could make a pretty big difference in the amount of damage your bow is putting out. We also have uh, ignores target's defense, which will make it so that attack rating doesn't matter versus a monster when you're shooting them. Although keep in mind, this does not work versus bosses. So you're going to need attack rating to hit the bosses. 25 to 30 percent cold skill damage which is going to enhance the frost nova damage the holy freeze damage the blizzard damage and if you're a ice 
Amazon, if you're specifically a freezing arrow Amazon, that is also something that you're going to be able to look forward to because it's going to increase your freezing arrow by that percent. Um, we also have negative 20% to enemy cold resistance, which is again amazing for a cold Amazon. Um, so keep this in mind when you're using this particular bow that the enemy cold resistance is going to be absolutely sweet uh, for you and, uh, and, and any of your cold abilities, including the Frost Nova and the, uh, the Holy Freeze, are going to gain from that benefit. Uh, we also have 7% Life Steal, which is always nice to have on a bow. 20% Deadly Strike, which will stack with the Amazon's native critical hit. And if you're using this on a non-Amazon, um, you can also gain that 20% Deadly Strike. Like if you were a, uh, a Holy Freeze Paladin using this bow, that would be actually a pretty good option. Um, you could use this bow and uh, and you could save yourself the points. So you wouldn't have to put points into Holy Freeze directly, uh, but you could still build the synergies. And, uh, and then you could, uh, you know, maybe use something else along with this. But you would get the 20% crushing blow, the enemy cold resist, the cold skill damage, and it would all increase your, uh, your total damage up. And, uh, and also we have uh, gold for monsters based on character level, which is, uh, which is interesting. Up to 309% though at level 99, which is, which is a lot of extra gold. So let's go over to the game real quick and, uh, and let's take a look at the bow and let's actually play around with it for a minute, shall we? So, uh, so right off the bat, you'll notice that I have two bows in my inventory. So I've got the Grand Matron bow, and I have the uh, the other. So if you were going to make this on an Amazon, you would probably make this in a plus three Grand Matron bow. And if you were going to make this for a non-Amazon, you would probably make it in a Ice bow. Now the main difference between these two bows is that plus the skills, but there is also a difference in the requirements. So if you see here, the um, Hydro Bow is 134 Strength, 167 Dex, and the Matron Bow is 152 Strength, 108. So uh, that's a pretty big difference there as far as the stats are concerned. Um, now, like I said, if I was a, a non-Amazon, I would definitely go with the Hydro Bow. Now, um, when you attack with this bow, it's really, really cool because you get the, um, the Frost Nova, which comes out pretty much all the time. And of course, I'm using the uh, the bone armor, but that's okay. So we've got the frost novas coming out, and you can see everything is chilled, not only from the frost novas, but from my holy freeze aura as well. So the holy freeze aura is going to keep everything nicely in check. But do keep in mind that the holy freeze aura doesn't work on certain monsters. So any monster that it, uh, that is immune to uh, to any type of slowing effects. Uh, most notably, uh, Death Lords will have absolutely no effect on. And uh, I'm trying to see if I can find a Death Lord really quickly. Uh, it doesn't look like this is a, a Death Lord zone. I see Haradrum, I see snakes. So that's a no. Let's try Crystalline. A lot of the times there's Death Lords in Crystalline. And these are the um, the specific Death Lords that are not immune to the effect. I have to get the ones that are... They can't prove me wrong. They can't prove me wrong. So there are certain Death Lords, believe it or not, that Holy Freeze works on. Um, it's been a little while since I've actually played around with it, but, uh, but some of the Death Lords are immune to it, and some of them are not. And I, if I remember correctly, the ones that are in Crystalline are not. Um... But it, just keep in mind that some monsters are completely unaffected by the Holy Freeze aura. Um, and you have to watch out for those. Now, the Holy Freeze has two components. It has a cold damage component and it has the slow target buy component. So when you come across a monster that is immune to cold, um, they will still suffer the slow target buy effect, but not the chill effect from the actual ice. Um, and this means that they're going to be moving faster. So you're, the reason why Holy Freeze works so ridiculously well is because Holy Freeze has two slowing components to it, not just one. It's using the chill effect from regular ice attacks, and it is also using the slows target buy. And, uh, and it can be combined with other slows target buy effects, by the way. So if you do have something like... Um, like a clay golem, or if you have a, uh, a decrepify uh, proc, or if you have um, any kind of slows target by, like a razor tine or a kelpie snare, whatever it may be, those slows target effects will stack up to 80%. That is the that's the cap. 
Um, however, I think you can't have more than one on one particular monster, or, you know, or person or mercenary. So, like, if you have a 70% a um, slows target by weapon and, like, a 20% slows target by armor, they don't stack together. It's probably just going to use the 70%. But if a monster is being affected by Holy Freeze, Decrepify, and being hit by a, a, a Merc that has slows target by, they all stack together up to that 80% cap. Um, which, which if you've, I don't know if you've ever seen a monster who is chilled and 80% slowed, but they literally can't move. I remember one time I had Diablo, he was like 80% slowed and chilled and he was trying to use his cold touch and it looked like he was stuck in some sort of horror movie and, and like it literally took him like 30 seconds to complete one cold touch. And I was like, okay. And, and and he literally couldn't do anything the entire fight. He was just stuck there, and he was completely and utterly um, frozen, almost. Just just almost frozen. Just Im He was moving almost imperceptibly, like, as far as, like, how how <laughs> ridiculously slow he was going. And uh, and the funny thing is, is when he casted spells, he was okay, but when he uses melee attacks, he was... Uh, he, it would take him forever to use a single melee attack. Because I don't know if you know this, but casting speed is unaffected by slow's target by, which is really weird. Um, now, this particular bow, uh, it just it seems like a very amazing bow for a cold boson. So if you are a ice arrow Amazon, it just makes perfect sense. If you are a fire Amazon, probably not. And if you are a, uh, a strafe Amazon, maybe not. Um, it really just depends on on what specifically you're going for, and uh, and does this have some builds maybe outside of an Amazon? Yeah, I think I think there are some other characters who could uh, who could get some funny uses out of this. Um, I mean, I could totally see a sorceress if maybe even wielding this with thirty percent skill damage and twenty percent enemy cold resistance. That's a lot of uh, skill damage and cold resistance, that negative cold resistance. But um, you know, cold cold mastery does reduce cold resistance already so maybe it's not quite as amazing as it might seem um unless you were a bow sorceress and in that case maybe i don't know <laughs> um now i actually really am looking forward to making one of these for my amazon um, i have a ice and fire amazon i named her tnt and uh and what i was planning to do was i was going to have one of these bows um, and I was going to have the uh, the fire bow, which I can't remember right off the top of my head, uh, which one the fire bow is. It's uh, it's been a little while since I've uh, I've looked them up, but uh, there is quite a few different bows in the uh, in the game, and uh, and the one that I'm thinking of, I'm pretty sure has negative enemy fire resistance, and uh, that's why I was considering it. So what I was thinking of doing was having the ice bow on one and the fire bow on the other that way i could uh, swap back and forth so i thought it'd be interesting anyway as always i do hope that you guys and gals appreciate these videos and uh, and uh, thanks for watching and uh, keep watching